it's an exciting day for me in the garage today because today is the big day that I am installing long tube headers and the ORY pipe. This is a kit from Speed Engineering. It's a 304 stainless steel. It includes the long tube headers and uh, the off-road Y pipe. Shipped for under 400 bucks. And as you can see, the Y pipe is in pieces. So it shouldn't be too hard to install. Uh, the difficult part is gonna be getting the old Y pipe off. All right, so my plan of action on this is gonna be to disconnect the negative battery cable first. And then I'm gonna take off the front wheels and uh, take off the plastic fender wells on the fronts and uh, get the truck up as high as humanly possible. And of course, I'm in a garage, so I can only go about that high. All right, so I disconnected the battery and the front wheels are loose on both sides, so I'm gonna go ahead and block up the back wheels. I went ahead and blocked up the back wheels so I can get the front wheels up off the ground. All right, I wanna stop and make one thing clear before we go any further. Working on your car when it's this high off the ground is extremely dangerous. You could be seriously injured or killed if you don't support your car the right way. So I started here and jacked this up to about a third of the height that it's at right now. I blocked the rear wheels. Then I jacked up the second jack about a third of the way. And then I went to the back and jacked it up a third of the way. And then that one a third of the way. And then I came back and I went another third, and another third, and another third, and another third. I went slow, I went steady. I made sure that I picked good points on the frame. I'm using Strongway six ton jack stands. They were purchased at uh, Northern Tool. What I like about them is they're the only ones that I found that have this extra locking mechanism, all right? So, make sure you go slow. Safety is absolutely first and foremost. You can't enjoy new headers, or any new mod for that matter, if you get killed in the process of putting them on. So don't be stupid. Also, keep in mind, I am not a professional mechanic. I'm just a guy who likes working on my cars. This is not intended to be a fully complete, unabridged, version of how to do this. This is just a guideline. This is just the way I'm doing it. And trust me, I'm no ASC certified tech. Make sure you use jack stands that can withstand the weight of your car or an excess of the weight of your car. Make sure you put the jack stands safely on a solid metal frame portion of the automobile. And after that, make sure that the jack stands are nice and tight and don't slip. Loosen the lugs while it's on the ground. That way, if you jerk the car really hard, it's not going to fall on you. All right, as for the plastic retaining clips, if you go to AutoZone or Advanced or O'Reilly's or Napa, get the right tool. It makes it much, much easier to get these guys out in one piece so that they're reusable. So here's the reason why I pulled the wheel and pulled the big plastic fender well thing. As you can see what easy access I get to the exhaust manifold bolts and then later the header bolts. Also gonna need to take that O2 sensor off. I got pretty, pretty easy access to that as well. And even have easy access to uh, where our Y pipe connects up with the uh, exhaust manifold. So that is the method to my madness. Another thing to take into consideration is the fact that you can see the uh, exhaust manifold bolt here, but what you can't see is the last one. There he is, right there. Looks easy to get to, because I shoved the camera up in there, but take a look. Pulling that heat shield off will give me much easier access to that last exhaust manifold bolt. And I'm probably gonna pull spark plugs too so I don't accidentally smack them and break them, because that would suck. All right, under the car now. 
let's take a look at some of the challenges that await us. Number one is your exhaust manifold to Y pipe bolts. If you haven't had them off recently like I have, you're gonna have to hit these guys with some penetrating oil. I recommend hitting them the night before and letting them soak all night because they could be a real bear. It looks like three bolts, but those three bolts could be hours and hours of frustration if they strip or if you can't get them off. This is the passenger side. Now the driver's side is much more of a challenge, especially if you have four-wheel drive because you've got the front drive shaft in your way. Um, but definitely, by all means, take the O2 sensor off first and you want to hit those guys with some penetrating well. All right, now, two options with the white pipe. Number one, if you're not going to use it again, you can cut it. And number two, you can leave it intact and take the cross member out. If you take the cross member out, remember the cross member is supporting the transmission and, and the transfer case. If you have a transfer case, you can pull the cross member out and the transfer case will sit. I think this is like a torsion bar or something like that. It's another cross member. If you take out that first cross member, or if you lower it, the, uh, the rear of the transfer case will rest on it. Now, I have made the decision I don't want to keep my Y pipe because it's got the cats on it and everything else. I want it in one piece. So I'm not going to cut it. I'm going to pull it out the hard way, which means I got to get this cross member out, the transmission cross member. So there's two bolts on that side, two big, gnarly suckers on that side. And then there's two bolts on this side. Just keep in mind, there's actually four nuts on this side because there they are right there. You got two nuts holding this bracket on and then you got two more nuts on the inside so I'm probably gonna loosen those guys up once you loosen them up uh, you want to support you want to support the transmission cross member with a jack okay that begs the question where to start I am gonna start with the O2 sensors because I don't want to drop any exhaust parts and mess up any of this electrical connections. Now this is a 2002 Tahoe and on my truck I've got four OT sensors. You've got two before the catalytic converters and then you've got this is the passenger side after the catalytic converter. This is the driver's side before the catalytic converter and here is the driver's side after the catalytic converter. So if you let those bolts bathe in PB Blaster for a long time, hopefully you won't have any trouble. And here's the driver's side, all loose and off. And here's the passenger side. Not sure what that was, but it sounded like a little cross between a Frenchman and Arnold Schwarzenegger. A passenger side. Now here's the passenger side right here. Uh, we are all unhooked the exhaust manifolds so we could pull the exhaust manifolds off now or we can get to work on this cross transmission cross member to get the white pipe out I'll think about it for a second okay with everything loose up there I think I'm gonna go after these guys next because my thought process is if I separate the Y pipe from the rest of the exhaust, it'll still hang on the cross member as long as the cross member's in. That way I can let the cross member down slowly and hopefully not scuff up a bunch of stuff up there as I'm letting it down. All right, you gotta remember that there's a bracket on the driver's side that you have gotta get off and get out of the way. Get him out of the way. Your 
free to go after the next two bolts on this side. Okay, with all four of the cross member bolts out, now remember I have a four wheel drive. I have a four wheel drive. With my four wheel drive, my transfer case is resting on this back cross member slash torsion bar. I think that's what that is. All right, I don't know what your deal is if you have a two wheel drive. You might not be able to do this if you have a two wheel drive. I don't know what the deal is. If somebody wants to comment, they can comment. But with a four wheel drive, this cross member bar is now hanging off the transmission by these two guys right here. Once you do those two bolts, uh, the transmission cross member will fall. And what I'm gonna do is, uh, once I get it out of the way, I'm gonna resupport the transmission uh, with a jack stand or something like that. All right, so for what it's worth, my goal with this right here is for the transmission to sit where it normally would sit without putting undue pressure uh, on the transfer case. So the transfer case right now is no longer sitting on this rear cross member. It's being supported right where the cross member used to be by this wood. Okay, now it is time to go to war with the Y pipe. It was definitely worth not cutting it so that I have it again. Uh, if I ever need it in the future. But for now, I'm gonna throw it aside and go after the exhaust manifolds. Have you ever wondered what your car sounds like with no muffler and no exhaust pipes whatsoever? This is uh, just the manifolds. these exhaust manifolds. <clears throat> I might take this mofo off. These two, this one and that one are easy. It's the one way up in there that I worry about. Well, dipstick has got to go. Well, dipstick, got right to go. Might, might be that going after that guy might be easier from up here. You can always pull that heat shield, but I have decided to use my tight reach wrench. All right, removing this is always an option if you have to. But I have employed this tight reach wrench, which is enabling me to do my socket turning from up here. Universal. There it is. There it is. One down, bunch to go. Here we go.
you've ever done spark plugs on one of these GM trucks, and you know how hard that number eight spark plug can be to get to. So, if you happen to be doing this, this might be a really good time to change the spark plugs too. I'm gonna pull mine, just because they stick out so far, and I know that the headers are gonna be a lot heavier in the manifold, and that way I don't either A, scratch the headers, or B, screw up the uh, spark plugs. All right, got the plugs and the wires all out of my way. I want to have as much room as possible for the new headers. I also have to uh, clean uh, the surface of the head, which I will do. So the driver's side is somewhat trickier than the passenger side because you got more stuff in your way. One thing I'm going to do is disconnect this steering shaft because it makes getting the uh, exhaust manifold out of there easier. And I'm sure it will make for getting the header back in there easier. Just have to remember to double check it once the header gets in there and make sure that the, uh, that the header fits. All right, so on to it. Okay. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but the driver's side was way harder than the passenger side. So my recommendation is start with the passenger side so you can get a feel for how everything's gonna go. But that, bolt way back there let's see if I can that guy right there he's really hard to get to with the heat shield on so there's a nut there and then there's two more nuts down there I removed the heat shield and I was able to get to that uh, exhaust bolt and uh, and get it off but other than that it was really really hard this side took a lot longer than the other side. So I think I'm gonna pack it in for the night. Okay, it has gotten kind of late here tonight and uh, I'm gonna wrap things up. It's gonna sit overnight, so I just went ahead and taped everything up, uh, all the holes, so I don't get any crap inside. So this might be overkill, but I'd rather be overkill than have an issue later. So that's that.